Every year, Save the Children releases a flagship report, State of the World's Mothers. And in the 2013 report, this is the 14th report, and it has a very important synergy between mothers and newborns. So Melinda Gates opens the report with the statement that a report on the state of the world's mothers is a report on the state of the world. And I would like to add to that that a report that looks at newborns surviving the first day, surviving the first month, is also a report on our future. It's bringing together two critical themes that are at the heart of development, at the heart of health, and will continue to be at the heart of development and health after 2015. So this report has a focus on the women of the world, mothers, and there's an index which ranks the best and the worst places to be a mother. What's new this year in the index is the index has been simplified. So in previous years we've separated the poorest countries and the richest countries, but we recognise that a mother is a mother wherever she is, and we believe that those rights and how we judge what's happening for those women should be applied equally everywhere. So these five pieces, maternal risk of dying uh, during labour or during pregnancy, uh, the child's risk of dying before their fifth birthday, education, gross national income and women in parliament together ranked show us the best and the worst places to be a mother. To come out top, you have to do well in all of them. You have to be a consistent performer. So Finland is at the top. The top five are all Scandinavian uh, countries. Uh, the top 20 are all countries in, in Europe, plus also New Zealand and Australia. Uh, the UK comes 23rd, uh, and the US, unfortunately, comes in at 30. And at the other end of the scale, the worst places to be a woman, to be a mother, um, are countries that have been disproportionately affected by conflict. The bottom five uh, DRC uh, is at the bottom of the, the rankings this year. Uh, but there isn't a lot to separate DRC from Somalia, from uh, Chad, um, from Niger, uh, all countries that have had conflict in the last few years. Um, and particularly also countries where the risk of maternal death and also unmet need for family planning strongly affect women's health. So it isn't just the risk of dying when you're pregnant. One of the key messages that we see for women's health is the importance of empowering families to be able to plan their families and have access to do that to the necessary commodities. Well, each year, Save the Children, Save the World's Mother's Report has a particular focus. And this year, for 2013, it's on newborns, and especially that critical first day of life. The baby sits with the mother and is intimately linked to the mother. But in many ways, babies have been lost on our global health agenda. So if we look now at the fantastic and encouraging progress we've had for child survival, uh, child deaths now down to under 7 million a year, really historic progress and uh, too many unpreventable deaths still. But the part that's really been left out and left behind is the newborn. Still 3 million deaths each year um, and really hugely preventable. This report highlights that 75% of those could be prevented. And there are three important areas of new analysis uh, that show where we should focus. So the first one is the first ever uh, analysis for over 180 countries of the risk of dying by day in your first month of life. And this uh, data put together across 180 countries shows that one million babies die on the day that they're born. And we in Save the Children and in the development community strongly believe that no baby is born to die. And to die on the first day, just when a family is welcoming new life, is something that shouldn't happen and doesn't have to happen. So for 50 countries with data since the year 2000, we've looked at the gap within those countries between the richest and the poorest. And on average, the poorest are 40% more likely to die on the first month of life. And that is unacceptable in a given country. So, for example, uh, in India, which has more than 850,000 newborn deaths every year, 
more than 300,000 of those newborn deaths could be saved if the poorest families in India had the same chance as the richest families. And the third part is very much on the solutions. So we know that 75% of newborn deaths could be prevented and that includes being able to provide good care during pregnancy, good care at birth and good postnatal care including emergency care for babies if they have a problem. But in some countries with weaker health systems being able to provide that whole system straight away is going to take time. And just over the last year the United Nations has set up the UN uh, Commission on Life-Saving Commodities picking 13 priority commodities or devices or medicines that are really high impact and underused and they include four for newborns. So in this report we took these four priority uh, medicines and devices that are already agreed to by the global community um, and looked at how many lives would be saved if those reached every mother, reached every newborn. One of the really key things that is highlighted in this report is despite the very big burden of newborn deaths and despite the huge potential impact, even in a short amount of time, the number of lives that could be saved, the funding for this is really inadequate. So considering more than half of child deaths in every region except Africa are now newborn deaths, it, we believe that the data shows that more investment is needed for this area, not just because it's a problem, but because we have solutions and there are countries that are making a difference. And then what to invest in? Well, that's the critical part. And there is nothing that is a greater test of a frontline worker than whether they can look after a newborn baby. And I know as uh, someone who was a neonatologist and someone who's worked in Africa for the last 20 years that for most frontline workers that's often the thing they're most nervous about. So for our community health workers, for our midwives, for our nurses and also for doctors, we really need to look at in skilling them up to be able to be confident to save newborn lives. Then we also need the right commodities and the right devices. This report highlights four basic commodities that are really essential for saving lives. Resuscitation devices, injection antibiotics for sepsis, uh, injection steroids for women in preterm labour um, and also chlorhexidine. And these are cheap. <laughs> All of these are affordable. Um, um, particularly the, the antibiotics, the steroids and the chlorhexidine are around 50 cents each for full courses. So this is something that really needs to be rolled out. This is Save the Children's annual flagship report um, and it's no accident that it focuses on mothers and on children. And this is something that's core to every part of Save the Children family. This is something that all of us uh, can stand on, can shout for and really believe in. And I think this is also a report that's coming out at a time when we've come in through a transition of becoming a, a global Save the Children family. Um, and this report really speaks for every country that is part of that family. Uh, every country, whether uh, a high income country or a low income country, has too many newborns that are dying. Those newborns are dying more for the poorest families. We have things that we can do better. Uh, so this is something that all of us can speak about in our own countries, that we can take forward, um, and that really has the news, the data, and the messages around frontline workers, around action for the poorest, and around reaching every woman, every newborn, and every child.